good Friday. We do the last thing. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Coming out of St. Mark 15 and 34, St. Matthew 27 and 46. And he just comes in and he just jumped up here so quick. Cool. Yes, I said I have two verses that coming out of Matthew 27, and, I mean, Matthew 27, 46, and Mark 15, 34. And it reads, And about the night hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, And I looked this up. I want to be able to pronounce it right. He said, Ellie! Eli, lama sabbatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And it says that Mark said it in the Aramaic version. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Elohi, Elohi, lama sabbatani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? What I realized, and Paul put it like this, Paul said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And here it is, Christ Jesus is crying out. He's crying out to his God. Why have you forsaken me? And we know that God had not forsaken him, but he had, he had to punish sin. His son had taken on sin for each and every one of us. He had taken on sin, so God had to, he can't let sin slide, so he had to judge sin. And that's what Jesus did for every one of us. He took that sin on his back, that we may have eternal life with the Father. But one of the things he gave us to do is when you're going through when you, before you got saved, you didn't have the mind of Christ. You were in your sins, and you were looking at every unsavory, unsavable thing. And you found no fault with some of those things. But what he gave us to do is cry out to Elohim. My God, come down and save me. You know, and that's, that's, that's what I get. This is my sixth year doing this. The first one that I had, the first one that I had is, this day will you be in, with me in paradise? I said nothing, Hawk. I said nothing. But when I finished, you guys jump to your feet and you embrace me. And you know what that did? That encouraged me. That encouraged me to come back one more time. And that coming, me coming back one more time, God was dealing with me, so I came back again. And I came back again and again and again. So right now, I'm rooted in this thing. I couldn't get up out of this thing if I want. The only way I'm getting up out of here is I'm going to die. Because I cried out to Elohim, my God, save me. I know my God has not forsaken me. He has not turned his back on me. He told me that he'd be with me always. That he never turned his back on me. So anytime I, I, I have moments of despair or whatever, that I feel like I'm not loved. That I'm not getting something that I, that I feel I, I, that I need. All I have to do is call, call my God. Amen. Call my God. Amen. Now I love my pastor. I love you guys. But it's sometimes I can call you and you can't do nothing about it. But I can always call Amen. L.O.B. Amen.
Deacon Tim Tom came to my mind. This time, Jesus felt separated from God because he became our scapegoat. Yes. Yes. He that had done no sin had the sins of the world laid on him. And we laid our sins who were wrong on Jesus. And because we put our sins on him, he took our sins and became the scapegoat for us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He that had never been out of fellowship with God because he taken on our sin, now God had to turn his back. Because God could not be acquainted with sin. That's why we find in Holy Scripture, for we have not a high priest who is not acquainted with our infirmity. Jesus understands what it means to be the scapegoat. He understands what it means now to be separated from God. So he suffered the atrocity and he finished his course so that we could be reconciled back into the relationship that he was so well acquainted with. So, this is how wonderful and how special Jesus is to us. He understands how it feels to be separated from God by taking on our sin. So, it was paramount for Jesus to finish his course so he could bring us back into fellowship. 